Arsenal fan TV. Mo, first of all, man, lovely house, mate. And thanks for your hospitality today no worries, when we've been, you know, I mean, the snow, we didn't get to get to the game because of the snow. It took us, we went to pick up Mo. It took us, right, to drive um, about four miles to get to Mo's house um, after picking up troops. It took us our hour and a half. And, you know, we was looking on the sat-nav, trying to get out, trying various different routes to get to get to the game. And then, in the end, the sat-nav was showing us that we get there about two o'clock, which is after the game, and we just had to give up. Mm. And it was horrific not being at the game. Yeah. And for much of the game, it was horrific. But Giroud, in the end, um, salvaged us on a point there. Yeah, and, it, and he's done it many, many times. It's frustrating, man. You're obviously waking up, looking forward to an away game. I tried to drive my car out to meet you guys. I got 20 feet away from my house and had to abandon my car in the middle of the road. Mm. I think we should have known at that point the day is just not going to be yeah. you know, our day. It's just, uh, you know, I'm gutted. It, obviously, when you come back and you salvage a point or, or whatever, it, it's a good feeling. But overall, man, we needed to win. Chelsea lost yesterday. We would have been one point behind them had we won. We needed to make it count. But... We always knew this was going to be a tough game, man. So I'm to... I was going to say, it's always going to be tough. We've only won there. Yeah. We, we've only won one the game out of the last season, six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Away and there. Generally, you know, when, when I think of Southampton away, I, I have bad memories, you know. Mm. And, um, you know, oh, I just, I'm really it's frustrated. fighting spirit to get, you know, come, you know, to get a goal back on a tough day. But the thing is about Arsenal, and it's something that I heard you say so many times in your interviews, play in both halves. Yeah. We keep getting off to these slow starts. Yeah, exactly. And it's even worse now because in the past we've always said we don't utilise the 90 minutes. But it's one thing not utilising it. It's, uh, it's another thing kind of completely working against yourself. Do you know what I mean? Mm. We're, we're making mistakes that make it so much harder to get anything out of the game. And I just kind of feel like, you know, the way Liverpool play, they have to score more to outweigh their defensive mm. mistakes. And Arsenal are starting to do that now as well. And you know, we don't score as many goals as Liverpool. It's harder work for us. I'm, I'm just really frustrated at that. And a lot of the performances today, when you look on the pitch, obviously, look, we're watching it on TV. It's a different experience to watching it at the ground, but it just simply wasn't good enough. There was no yeah. intensity in the game. You know, people talk about possession and touches and all of that nonsense. If you look at the top five games in the history of the Premier League in terms of which team has had the most possession, yeah? They're all games where the favourite has either lost or has got very last-minute winners. Like, the... Number one game in Premier League history of mismatched possession is Man City QPR when they won the league 3-2. And that tells you a story. When things aren't going to plan, you have all of the ball because the team gives you the ball. Mm. So we can look at that and we can praise our players for passes and touches and all that nonsense. Ultimately, we were toothless in that game. Absolutely mm. toothless. And as usual, it comes down to one man to unlock the door. It's Alexis Sanchez. And he didn't have a good game either because he, he gave the ball away today. so much. Yeah. But I almost feel like with him, if you look at it from his point of view, every time he gets the ball, he's forcing it. And as a foot, mm. uh, you know, when you play football, you say to each other, don't force it, relax, take your time, yeah. find the right opportunity. When he gets the ball, what else is he going to do? He's thinking to himself, well, no one else is going to do anything. No one else is going to take a risk. This is the third sideways pass I've received. I'm just going to put it in there. I'm just going to try and find someone. It's becoming very frustrating to watch Arsenal play like that because if you're not dynamic, fluent and quick with your passing, other teams in a league like this, the Premier League, they're organised good players. Yeah, they'll I mean, be able to absorb that all game. Southampton, they were very, they started off a second half so deep. They were just like yeah. so well organised though. Yeah. Really hard to break down. But the change and the key to the game for me when Arsenal bought on Jack, Jack Wilshire. Wilshire. Exactly. He changed the game. He started driving. He started drawing free kicks. There was a different dynamic to yeah, when 100%. Xhaka was on. There's... I want to ask you a question. Do these two players now need to start? Number one, Giroud, because he came on and he scored again. And number two, Jack Wilshire. Do they need to start starting games now? It's a difficult one because I'm a big fan of Lacazette. You know, I really feel like uh, I feel I feel that he hasn't had the service that I was expecting him to have at Arsenal. And yeah. uh, generally, when he gets a chance, he scores. You know, so mm. I can't really criticise him on much. His link up plays very good, and his touches are very good. But I'd feel hard done by if I Giroud as well. Yeah, he's got a few goals in the last few games he's played, and so yeah, there, there's a case for him. But with Wilshere, you know, last week you asked me this question. I said Arsenal have been on good form. It, we shouldn't, uh, aside from the United game, so mm. we shouldn't be changing the system just because of you know one bad game against United. But today I think was chalk and cheese in terms of the impact Granit Xhaka had on the game compared to Jack Wilshere. But I think. Arsene Wenger is going to be lucky in that the decision is going to be made for him with uh, Ramsey picking up an injury today. So it will be Xhaka and Wilshere, in my opinion, against West Ham. And at least that gives Wilshere a way into the team without you know, anyone kind of being... Mm. 
subbed or, or, or sorry, benched rather. So I just hope he grasps the opportunity because you know we're talking about these organised teams in the Premier League. When you're just passing it across, they're defending this imaginary semicircle, and it's very easy for them to shift as the ball's going. When you actually take a man on, that's the hardest thing to defend against. You've either got to foul him or you get beaten. Unless you pull mm. off a good tackle, obviously. But Jack Walsh is good enough to get past players. So it becomes very difficult. And then other players get dragged out of position. Pockets of space open up. Things happen. You get free kicks on the edge of the box. And that's what we saw when Walsh came on today. So I think today he made a very, very strong case for himself to say, mm. look, put me in the team. Irrespective of whether Ramsey got injured or not. But given that he did, almost certainly I, I, I think he'll start against West Ham.